Yo, what go on internet? Kyle Linux there. I've gotten a few comments from you guys about the intro song for the Kyle Linux cast channel. And uh, unfortunately, it isn't an artist that's out there that you can download from currently. Uh, it, it's actually me and my friends when we we had a you know cool little hip hop band that we used to do back in his, uh, history in high school, excuse me, in high school and in college. Um, we used to record a lot of music. We had quite a few mixtapes and um, album projects in different genres. It wasn't just rap, you know, jazz, jazz alternative, um, and even uh, kind of like a folk rock kind of thing. Anyway, the reason why I bring up music is because today we are going to look at a digital audio workstation called Our Door. Nope, not Audacity. I use Audacity to record the audio for these voiceovers when I do these videos, but Our Door is probably going to become the digital audio workstation of choice for me as far as recording music goes. I'm thinking about getting back into it just to have fun with it. You know, hobby thing on the side. So I figured it'd be a good idea to record or document how to install and configure our door to get you guys into it if you happen to be musicians or interested in getting started uh, in making music. So let's get right to it. All right, so check it out. We're going to go straight to the Ardor website, which is ardor.org. Boom. Cool. Landing page. Read up on the documentation if you're really interested in the uh, details of the program. Select download. Now you have two options, a ready to run program, which is similar to an executable on Windows or a uh, .dmg file on Mac. Uh, you can just double click on it and it'll install and you're good to go. Or you can get the source code and compile it yourself if you happen to be a genius, you know, uh, and by genius. I don't mean you have to be like super, super intelligent to do that. It's something that I think every Linux user should learn how to do, including myself. Um, I'm looking forward to learning how to do this and demonstrating in the future. So source code for those advanced users, ready to run program for those of us who are like quick, fast in a hurry and don't want to configure stuff. Of course, we're going to select the good old buddy Tux here. And then uh, from here, you decide if you're, if you're on a 32-bit system or 64-bit. Now, check it out. Digital audio workstations, in my opinion, use quite a bit of resources. So I recommend being on a 64-bit platform. You know, having the RAM to support a 64-bit platform because this thing is going to, you know, might use some resources when you start using plugins and different things like that. So that's something to think about and consider. Uh, you know, on your own terms and for your personal situation, basically. So, yeah. And then after that, click, yes, I want Ardor 5.12 to download it and go on and so forth. I have this downloaded already, not 5.12, but 5.10. And that is what we'll be installing today. So let's go over to the downloads folder. Da, 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 downloads. There we go. And we're just going to double click on this. I think I already have it installed, so it might uninstall and then reinstall itself. So, you know, no worries. It'll give the same prompts. Double click, run in terminal. You can do run or run in terminal. Run is going to bring up its own terminal that comes uh, prepackaged with the, you know, within the script. And then you have run in terminal, which is your terminal that you have on your system, your default terminal on the system. So I just use mine. Uh, yeah, and it's, you know, quick, fast, and in a hurry, it does its thing. <laughs> But yeah, all right, so here we go. Welcome to the Ardor installer. Ardor will be installed for user Kai Linux in that directory. <laughs> so I'm gonna pump my password in there real quick and hit enter. It already found the existing installation. See, so this is the prompt. You guys will get this prompt too, I think, even if you don't have it installed. Um, but it'll go through it. Once it detects that there isn't one there, it'll continue on with the script. So we're gonna uninstall mine. Now, this is the cool part. So uh, I mentioned before Jack, or, or I may or may not have mentioned before using Jack. So Jack is essentially going to be 
the best thing that you have uh, to work in conjunction with our door. Uh, what I mean is you're going to be using Jack to configure your sound settings. So latency, uh, microphone configuration, amplification, these kind of different things. Now, granted, you'll do those things and you'll do some of those things in Ardor as well. Ardor has way more features, but this is to get your uh, microphone and your recording situation, the entirety of the input device that you have working optimally with the program. So I highly recommend letting it do its thing. It's great that they put this in here because in the past you'd have to install a uh, QJack control yourself, um, you, you know, typing in sudo apps. In, app get install QJack control etc uh, so it's great that they put this within the script so we're gonna run that because we want that we definitely want that all right and then boom we're gonna hit enter yeah add me to the audio group yes now here we go so warning your system seems to use frequency scaling I don't know the depths to the frequency scaling thing I haven't looked that up uh, that term frequency scaling up yet but um, what I do know is that serious impact on audio latency back in the days when I was on Windows and I used Adobe Audition to record music, latency was a big deal and it drove us nuts, you know, back then because we didn't know what we were doing. We were, you know, still learning at the time. So uh, essentially latency is going to be the time in which you record, you know, you speak into your microphone and the time it takes before the computer picks that sound up and records it onto the uh onto our door in, in the digital audio workstation so you want that to be very performant now that's why i was recommending having a 64-bit system is because you want to have as much ram as you can use and and uh computing power your cpu should be it doesn't have to be crazy beefy i have an i5 4460k and that's fine you know it's not it's not a problem and our door doesn't damage my system at all. I don't get any lockups or anything, but it's just something to think about. Don't do this on a netbook is what I'm saying. Use Audacity for that. So going forward, because that's fine. Install is complete. You need to log out and log in again for all the changes to be completed. So we're going to do that, right? We're going to log out. So, you know, I suggest you do it. I, I don't know how necessary this is, but just do it. You know, it's better to do that so that you can if you have a bug in the future that's something you can automatically rule out it's not because you didn't log out so we'll be right back you better not tell me the line all right we're back and that was audacity you saw <laughs> so making sure that it was recording so we're back and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up our door and our door is gonna be under your sound and video directory if you're on ubuntu mate 16.04 um, or any other ubuntu related distro Yay, okay, our door is digital audio workstation, blah, 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 cool. Um, each project you work in will get saved to this directory. I'll leave it there for now. I'm going to change this later because I don't really want stuff being saved into my home directory. I have a separate hard drive that's big, you know, a huge hard drive that can store these kind of files in the temporary files. So uh, if you have an external hard drive or a second internal hard drive, um, that you use for storage use that for this for saving these um, these files the wave files can add up after a while as far as its size their sizes are concerned same with like video if you're doing Kden live do, 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 do. while recording oh monitoring choices so you want to be able to listen to your other instruments as you're recording right everybody even for those of us who don't use instruments right for those the rappers out there are just the singers who have an instrumental track you want to hear the instrumental in the background so you should definitely have this set up properly so what i do depending on your setup i have our door um i ask our door to play back material as it's being recorded i let the software take care of it because the external mixer now this is a tough one i don't know Honestly, if my USB device, my preamp, my mobile pre USB is, you know, powerful enough to handle this. So I typically would go with let the software do it. But today I'm going to go with the hardware. We're going to see. You can change this at a later time. It's no biggie. Uh, for those of you out there, if you have a pretty strong audio interface, you know, whatever preamp you're using or audio interface you're using, then you're good to go. Hold on a second. My apologies, guys. So 
I did not log out earlier when I was supposed to after the installation completed because I'm a terrible person. Don't do what I do. Do what the program tells you to do, please. Basically, our door was not going to save, op neither open nor save the new session that I was creating because I did not do that. But you know, I didn't do that step. I skipped that step in the process. So log out, log back in. And then when you fire up our door, you shouldn't have any problems. So let's go through that again. I'm going to select our door. Start a new session. See, I, I did a test one just before this recording is to make sure and it does work. We're fine. It was the logout problem. Click new session. We'll put in the same folder. We'll do KT2 for Kai Linux test two. And then we'll go to open. Now from here, your audio system should be set to Jack as mentioned previously, not also set it to Jack your driver. Also, if also is the driver on the system probably is. And uh, for the device, uh, the, the device that this session will use select your external sound card or your input device your audio interface device uh if you are going to be recording directly into that like you're not plugging your microphone directly into your computer you have a usb you know preamp or some separate mixer that doesn't connect through your sound your internal sound card on your computer select that device and then the rest of this, your sample rate, if you know about these things, you know, for the musicians out there, you guys know what these things do. So, you know, we're not going to get into deep explanations. I don't use 48 because it makes my stuff sound, my older stuff that I've recorded sound weird because I recorded that in 44.1. So we're going to hit start. Yep. And hitting start made Audacity stop recording the audio I was recording initially. So that kind of cut out an entire section that I was recording. The stuff you're seeing now is the, you know, is me opening up the program and explaining certain things. So just to reiterate, because you guys can't hear that <laughs> because that stuff didn't get recorded. Um, the interface that you see is overwhelming at first if you're brand new to digital audio workstations and multi-track recording software. But don't be too intimidated. It's real simple, you know. Um, you arm your track for recording you arm the entire session for recording and by arm i mean you're checking these red the you know red record buttons in these two sections the track that you want to record on and then the main the full session and then you just hit spacebar or hit the play button and then it'll begin recording and you can go straight through and it's cool nice and simple there's no problems you know what i mean like very simple and good to get through and there are so many plugins and even uh, built in sound effects and things that you can use to edit your vocals and all the other things that you choose to record as you record them and after you record them. So this is a pretty powerful digital audio workstation. I'm really looking forward to recording some music and just trying some things out for you guys to demonstrate the power of Ardor and maybe even get some of you interested in recording music yourselves. If you never thought that you could do it or, you know, those of you who are like me and used to record music, but because of life and its circumstances like work and work and <laughs> student loans and work, you get to a point where you don't record as much because you're constantly working. Right. So you have to pick your time. You have to manage your time wisely. So for those like that, like myself. This might be a good way to get back into it when you have some downtime on a weekend or something like that to just, you know, get reacquainted to what you used to, with what you used to do. So that's where I stand right now. I'll uh, do some videos in the future regarding this. I'm thinking the next Ardor video will probably be about recording vocals in Ardor um, over uh, over some music. And I'm not a vocalist. I'm not a you know singer or anything like that by any means. Yeah, I used to rap when I was younger and I used to do or well, yeah, yeah, I used to rap. And by DJ, I don't mean the U.S. term of DJ, DJ in Jamaica, or just in the Caribbean in general, I believe is uh, it, it really means toasting or even rap singing in a way, like rap singing in Patois over uh, some loops or even over, you know, certain rhythms that people make. We call them rhythms, uh, same as beats, same concept, but they call them the rhythm. Uh, and you can get, you can guess what that's a playoff of the word rhythm, but you know, pronouncing patois. So, uh, yeah, so th that's my style of doing it. So the vocals will be in that 
kind of frame, not in a, oh yeah, singing opera style or pop or anything like that, because I don't do that. Um, so yeah, recording vocals and editing those vocals and adding effects to vocals to get you guys interested in doing this thing. And it'd be interesting to see if there is an open source version of auto-tune out there, you know, for those who love auto-tune. <laughs> I'll check that out and see if some alternative, some open source alternative exists. Because I'm sure some of you guys, some of the younger guys might be interested in that um, for the new age music that comes out now. So let me not keep you guys any longer. I apologize for the errors that have come up in this video and the length of this video. I know this is one of my longer ones. Sorry for the rambling and ranting <laughs> if it's driving some of you guys crazy. But, you know, still learning, still going through the process. I assure you the next video will not be as rambly and going on for too long. I'll make sure to keep it structured and not do an on the fly kind of thing. Thought that this would be simple, but, you know, things happen. Um, but I give thanks that you guys were here listening and watching and learning. I give thanks that you guys uh, heard the intro song and inspired me to do this video because you said you liked it. You know, so give thanks to you guys. Uh, guys and gals, all of whom are listening and tuning in, and I look forward to recording the next video for you. So, with all that being said, this has been Kai Linux. Give thanks for your ears and your eyes for the video, and remember, no matter what distro you use, out of many, one Linux. Peace. <laughs>